Pokemon Solar Light and Lunar Dark is a fan-made Pokemon game that includes over 350 fan-made Pokemon, a custom region, custom story, characters, moves, abilities, mostly everything. And I played through it. And let me just say, it was one of the best fan-made Pokemon games I've ever played. And as usual, if you want to check out Pokemon Solar Light and Lunar Dark for yourself, I'll leave it down below. So, without further ado, let's go. Welcome to the Rakoto region, the land of opportunity. Opportunity for you to drop a like and subscribe to my channel since I'd really appreciate it and these videos are really not easy to make. We meet the professor, Professor Pinewood, make my character, then wake up in my room to be greeted by this little blonde haired dude who tells me to send in my application for becoming an official Pokemon trainer. We go downstairs and our mom gifts us the running shoes and we go outside and explore around for a little bit. When I find that blonde dude's house, and when I leave his house, he rushes out to tell me that he's been accepted as an official Pokemon trainer, and to go check my messages too, to see if I've become accepted too. And when I check my messages, easy money baby, let's go! And then our task with heading to the lab to pick up our starter Pokemon. I go out and let our guy know we've been accepted, and he takes us to the lab, where we meet this pink-haired girl by the name of Kira, and we learn that our guy here is named Rodney. Now, just to clarify some things before we get any further in this playthrough. Before I started, I did take a look at the Pokedex and pick out a team of 6. Now, did I study every single Pokemon and their base stats, abilities, and type? No, absolutely not. Did I choose 6 Pokemon I think looked cool and had great stats and types I would like to use? Yeah, so that's what I did. So naturally, I had to take a look at the starters. We have Perlit, the fire type kitten Pokemon, which I know I didn't want since there was a very specific fire type I wanted to use. And the other two starters I was pretty torn on. We got Hervor, the grass type herbivore Pokemon. And the one I went with, the water type salamander Pokemon Salatad. And I named it Havoc. After getting our starter, I'm absolutely in shock when Professor Pinewood said that our Salatad should be kept outside of its Pokeball, meaning that this game had following Pokemon which was super sick and made the game that more enjoyable. We head out to the lab and are challenged by Rodney, and let me just say, his Herovore is an absolute unit. I did end up beating it but I'd need to use a potion, Havoc reaching level 6 and learning Bubble which was pretty nice. After the battle, Professor Pinewood comes out and tells me there's a package we need to go pick up from in Mossy Town. After exploring the route, seeing some new Pokemon like Hamstar, Elecritter, and Budchurt, we made it to Mossy Town, where I find this dude outside the Pokemon Center, and he takes me on a tour of the Pokemon Center, which not only looked really nice, but there was a special feature in this game called Quests, where an NPC will have a certain task for you to do, and doing so will get you some extra loot, which was pretty cool. After getting the package, I run back to Soul Tree Town and give the package to Pinewood, which just ends up being 3 Pokedexes for me, Kira, and Rodney, and 5 Pokeballs. Before being free on our journey, we gotta stop by Rodney's house and give him his Pokedex, and he tells us that the first gym is in Serpentine City, so we set our sights on there next. After saying bye to mom, we are free to go. On Route 1, I catch a Budcheat and an Ella Critter I named Blue and Tails, at level, and at level 8, Havoc learned Acid, which was surprising, but would make sense later. I do a small quest for this guy, which was to give a girl on Route 1 a love letter, since apparently this guy has no balls. So, we did that and we get given a free rare candy, so that was cool. Before progressing onwards, we gotta stop by Kira's house and give her her Pokedex, and she challenges us to a battle right outside a mossy forest. And we go out and demolish her with Bubble since she has the fire type starter. In Mossy Forest, I find, uh, pretty cool or weird looking things. Notable here was a Sticket I named Jake since, I don't know, just fit at the time. The forest wasn't too interesting, so here we are in Serpentine City, a very important place for a number of reasons. Number one, we have the first gym. Secondly, we have the trainer school, which was pretty uneventful. Third, there is a dude who will teach my Pokemon Headbutt, which will be significant later. And there is a certain someone I was ex especially excited to find. 
In front of the gym, we learned that the leader, Donna, the poison type leader, is in the Serpentine Garden, but before going to find her, Rodney challenges us to a battle, who is actually a threat since his Hurlvor hit like a freight train. But we ended up beating him, and at level 14, Havoc learned Bubble Beam, so that was a nice upgrade from Bubble. And this is where we meet our third rival in the game, I, I think? This red haired dude named Rick, who was all talk saying he was going to beat the Elite Four and become the champion, but like, broski, like, come on. After all that yapping, I headed to the Pokemon Center to finally find who I've been looking for this whole time. Password, Pat. This guy I was super excited to find, since he gives you some, uh, pretty insane rewards for giving him some correct passwords, which are all on the wiki, so, uh, yeah, this guy was a gem. I get a few different Pokemon, like Gear of Fire, I named Meatball, who was SHINY by the way! I get a Fiant, I named Heater, a Doveheart, I named Cupid, a Bunnick, I named Mooch, a Hollowweed, I named Hazard, a Move Fork, I named a Dasher, some Leftovers, and probably the best one I could possibly get, a Shiny Pinglet, I named King Pen. Pinglet's Evolution was one of the Pokemon I had planned to use for this playthrough, and getting to use it this early, when normally it's available super late in the game, was absolutely awesome. What was also an insane surprise, was that Mooch was holding a lucky egg, so that was awesome. After grinding, which was only getting King Pen to 14 since grinding really isn't fun, I headed to the Serpentine Garden to find Donna, and she heads back to her gym after speaking to her. Now this gym was a poison type gym, which, uh, looking at my team, I, I got nothing. The plan was to use Meatball's work up, which would raise its attack and special attack by two stages because of simple, and try to sweep her. The gym battles in this game only let you bring the same amount of Pokemon as the gym leader to make the fights a bit harder and more fair. So I bring King Pen, Meatball, and Havoc, and she leads with a Ta Dart, and I with King Pen which goes for a new move called Leaf Darts, which is basically a grass type triple axle, but weaker. Which does a lot, but I go for an Aurora Beam which almost kills it. She potions while I quick attack, so I just switch into Meatball and work up, and it sludges for some damage. Then, Meatball proceeds to go crazy on the rest of her team with Flame Burst, getting me the Thorn Badge in the TM for... What, fever? After the battle, Rodney tells me to head to the trainer school, since there's a dude that will gift me something since I beat the gym leader, but I completely ignore him and head west, and I'm stopped by Kira, who gives me an XP share and just bounces. I head west into the Dolphorn Forest, where I find Rick, who explains that the web that's here was made by a Spydox, and I gotta cut it down if I want to get through this place. After running around for a bit, I completely forgot that I was supposed to go to the trainer school where this dude says he'll give me a special item if I defeat all his children. So I did, and while doing this, Havoc reached level 16 and evolved into a Salanip, a water and poison type, which was a pretty sweet type since it was not a water type weak to grass, in fact strong against grass types. So after defeating all the trainers, the old guy gives me the clippers, the HM replacement for cut. Cause in this game, there are no HMs, they get replaced with key items which is a fantastic change. So with that I headed back into the forest where I'm able to cut down the webs to progress. Then Rick challenges me to a battle to quote unquote see if I'm a waste of time. So naturally I had to smoke him since his team was absolute garbage and proceed on. Now it was time I looked at the TM for fever. It was a 60 base power special poison type move with a chance to burn the target, so it was a strict upgrade to acid. Making my way through the forest, I reach this castle looking place, and some weird looking people who yap about getting some earth stone, and they ask me if I'm working for Team Solar. So I answer appropriately, and they challenges me to a battle, and I learned that these people are Team Lunar. So those were the evil teams in this game we were working with. After putting the two grunts out of their misery, Lunar Commander Scarlet challenges us to a battle, who was swept by King Pen. After making it out of the forest and our way through Route 2, Kira shows up and challenges us to a battle, who Havoc absolutely swept. After making it out through Route 2, we made it to our next destination, Crest Light City, 
where once we enter, are greeted by a woman who explains she got her handbag stolen by some crooks. The cops suggest that me and the gym leader Damon go explore the Black Leaf Woods to try and find the crooks. While making it through the forest, I encounter a Venap, who is one of the goofiest things I've ever seen, so I caught it and named it Jerry. Then I find Damon at some weird building in the middle of the woods, which wasn't suspicious at all. So we enter the house to find the two dudes just chilling there, so Damon and I demolish them and get the cops in here to arrest those bums. While running back to the city, I encounter a Gekon, which looks super cool. So I switched to King Pen to weaken it since I didn't want to do it with Hazard. And yeah, it teleported away, which I was pretty pissed about. And while running around trying to find another one, I end up finding a shiny lop hug, which, get this, has the same encounter rate as the Gekon I was after, which was uh, pretty comical. I catch it and name it Gumball, then sometime later, I find a shiny Venap, completely full odds by the way. But while trying to weaken it with Havoc, since this thing has arena trap, I wasn't able to switch out to something weaker, I end up critting it and killing it. Uh, oops. While I'm here, I also catch a Stotox, not a shiny one, don't worry, and name it Tox, and a Vambat I named Drac. After trying to find another Gekon for way too long, I give up and just head for the gym. After making it through the gym, notable was Havoc learning Bounce at level 23 while finding some Dream Trainers, which was pretty sweet. But we made it to Daemon, the Dark type leader. We are only able to bring 3 Pokemon, so I bring Havoc, Kingpen, and Tox, who I grinded up to the rest of the team. He leads with a Venap, who I one shot with Fever, bringing in his ace, Weirhide, who looked awesome. It howls while I bubble beam for a lot of damage, and it stupidly just howls a second time, allowing me to kill it with bubble beam. His last mod is a Vambat, who just gets one shotted by bubble beam, getting me the darkness badge and the TM for Dark Matter? A 60 base power special dark move that never misses. Afterwards, the gate north of the city opened up, so that's where we gotta go next. But Rodney stops us and challenges us to a battle, which was pretty easy since my team was pretty overleveled. He gives me the flashlight, the HM re replacement for flash, then we proceed on to Route 3, which was uneventful, then onto the Thunderdrome Pass, a very eventful area since we were about to catch three, yes, three new team members. The first one being a Dynamite, who was named Chief. This guy's a fighting type with the ability Moxie, which is pretty sweet, and it will be pretty great when it evolves. Our second member was a Razid, who I named Nitro. This thing is an electric and ground type with the ability Sheer Force, which once again will proceed to be a great member for the rest of the game. I accidentally proceed onwards to find Team Solar who have acquired the Volt Stone, still have no idea what these stones are for, but the two grunts challenges us to a battle which was pretty simple, and so was their commander Bright who was completely swept by Havoc. After that I finally found my final Pokemon I've wanted. After headbutting some trees, I found a Terraz, an electric and flying type with the ability, uh, Defeatist, which yeah is an absolutely awful ability. So you're probably wondering why I'm using this. Well, for one, it has a great type, only being weak to rock and ice moves. And this thing's stats are absolutely insane, for both this point in the game and when it evolves, being insanely fast and hitting insanely hard on the special side. I didn't know it at the time, but this thing would go on to be one of my best Pokemon on my squad. So I catch it and name it Ion, and I throw it as well as Chief and Nitro on the team after grinding them. Side note, uh, my Terraz had a modest nature, so it made it that more awesome. This was the squad I was going to rock with for a good portion of the game. After buying some potions and repels, I headed back through the Thunder Drone Pass, progressing through without too much trouble, until I run into Rick, who challenges me to a battle who was completely swept by Ion, so that was cool. After making it through the Thunderdrome Pass, we made it to Rust Bolt City, a pretty massive place. We run into Rodney, who explains that we gotta use the Cross Rocks to get around the city. But there's a taxi company who can take us around the city and are tasked with going to visit the taxi company. 
I find this building, which is the taxi place, and learn that the taxi company is on strike right now, since their boss doesn't pay him enough, and that we can find him in the central garden. So, I make my way over to see the boss just completely ignore the dude, and just leaves. The dude tells us that maybe we can have a word with him in his office, so we get there and the worker tells me to battle his boss, and if I win, he needs to give him a raise. So naturally I put him in his place, and the worker gives me a bike voucher. Outside the building I learn how to use the taxi services, so I pull up to the bike shop to get my bike and realize that they're all out of bikes, which uh, no you're not. So instead I head for the gym, which is an electric type gym, which I'll say, was uh, pretty hard. I threw Jerry the vent up on the team since I wanted an, an electric resist, which didn't help me at all. And after making it through the gym trainers, we made it to Electra. The three Pokemon I brought was Chief holding the cell battery, an item that would boost its attack when it got hit with an electric move, Nitro with the ground gem, an item that boosts the first ground type move used by 50%, and Jerry with the leftovers. She leads off with a Terraz, so I switch Chief into Nitro and take an Air Cutter which uh, does a lot of damage. I go for Spark which gets it to about 25% so now it was in Defeatist. We both heal and this time I Rock Tomb while it Air Cutters again. Rock Tomb almost takes it out and expecting a heal I Hone Claws and it uses a uh, Charge? So I finish it with Rock Tomb while it just Air Cutters again bringing in Echo Buzz, an electric and grass type. I go for Rock Tomb and it does half, and this like Mega Drains for the kill and getting most of its health back. I switch it to Chief and use Arm Thrust just for as much damage as possible, and it only hits twice. While this thing Parabolic charges for a lot, but activates my Cell Battery, so I risk another Arm Thrust and it only hits twice again cause this move is complete f***ing dog sh and it takes me out with Parabolic Charge. All I have left is a Jerry which takes out the Echo Buzz but she brings in Rush Shot, her ace, and Jerry can't get the job done against it, and I end up losing. After healing and some planning, I head back to the gym and this time I bring Nitro, Ion, and Havoc, since Havoc's poison type moves is all I have against her Echo Buzz. She leads with Terraz and I click Rock Tomb while it goes for Charge. Rock Tomb brings it into the red and I know she's gonna potion, so I Hone Claws. It Air Cutters for some damage and then dies from Rock Tomb bringing in her Echo Buzz. I know this thing's gonna Mega Drain switch, so I switch to Ion to eat it. I go for Air Cutter doing some damage, and it going for Parabolic Charge, which does a lot. I realize Ion isn't gonna be doing much, so I heal up Nitro and let Ion go down. I bring in Havoc and use Fever, which brings it into the red, and get a Clutch Burn on it. And it just Parabolic Charges me for about half my health. But I'm just faster than it, and I take it out with Fever. Lastly is the Ace Rush Shot. I know it's going to go for an electric type move, so I switch it to Nitro, eating up the spark, and going for a ground jab boosted bulldoze. While it went for a normal gem boosted swift, and I live the swift, and bulldoze sends this thing to the stratosphere, winning me the lightning badge and the TM for lightning strike, a 75 base power special electric move with a chance to confuse. After healing, I head on over to route 4 which was pretty uneventful, just finding the Hone Claws TM which I taught the Chief, and at level 25, the Chief finally wanted to learn Submission, a fantastic upgrade since Arm Thrust, since that move is absolute dog Then making it to the cycling path, and realizing that I had no bike, so I had to run to Rust Bolt to go grab my bike. Cycling Road was pretty uneventful too, just finding the Aerial Ace TM, who I taught the King Pen and Chief, and a battle with Ronnie before we got into the cycling road, who was completely swept by Nitro. Not too long we made it to Brushes Town, where we find Kira and Rick arguing about Pokemon eggs. After that kerfuffle, Kira explains that this is the daycare, which no one cares, and we go inside where we find two solar grunts trying to steal some Pokemon eggs. So we shut them down, and as a reward, we were able to choose between a yellow, purple, and blue egg. Now I'm not going to spoil what's in these eggs in case you want to play the game for yourself, but I end up choosing the blue egg. After we choose our egg, Kira tells us our next destination is the Goldoon Desert, so that's where we gotta get going. Before entering the desert, Kira challenges me to a battle who was completely swept by Ion. 
We make it through the desert without too much trouble. Notable was Ion learning a new move called Air Cannon at level 27, which is basically a flying type vacuum wave. Also notable was finding the Bulldoze TM, who I taught the Chief. Before making it to the next town, I speak with this guy who gives me the safety goggles, which was a pretty awesome item, and was going to come in pretty handy since the next gym here, in Goldoon City, is the ground type. I pick up some key items like the Dig TM and the Strength Gloves, the HM replacement for Strength, and learn that the gym leader Dusty is out studying rocks in the cave in the desert, so that's where I gotta go next. I head in the cave to find both Rick and the gym leader Dusty, who found some fossils and we get to choose one. I pick the teeth fossil and let it rot in my bag for the rest of the playthrough since I completely forgot to revive my fossil when I got it. So yeah, that one's my bad. After that discussion, I headed back to Goldune and headed straight for the gym. The puzzle wasn't too hard and now it was time to take on Dusty. I pick Kingpen, Havoc and Ion for my three and he leads off with a Cassand, a ground bug type. My plan for this gym was to try and sweep it with Kingpen's Ice Ball, an ice version of Rollout which gets stronger every time you use it. After some time and some Ice Balls missing, I take out the Cassand and the incoming Orature, since the Ice Ball was pretty strong at this point, before getting taken out by his ace, Monstoon, a ground dark type. I bring in Havoc and click Bubble Beam while it goes for Geosphere, a 65 base power special ground move that ignores the target's immunity to ground type moves via being a flying type or the ability levitate. But Havoc lives on 1 HP, literally, and fires back with a torrent mystic water boosted bubble beam that does about 75% to it. But Havoc goes down to the sandstorm, so it's up to Ion. I click air cutter and it just barely doesn't kill, but this thing goes for dark matter instead of geosphere which would have been super effective because of its special effect, and it does about 75% back to me. So, I just air cannon for the win, getting me the sand badge and the TM for quicksand, which is basically a weaker special version of sand tomb. So, with the fourth gym badge acquired, I headed north to the Foul Rock Valley, where I meet this little girl and Kira, and explains that she got her Pokemon stolen by some people in dark uniforms. So, Kira and I go head first in the cave and find Team Lunar. And let me just say, Kira and I were kinda cooking. Her Pixlily was actually really strong. But we made it to Com Lunar Commander Marcus, who was actually pretty hard. His Drakibat was pretty difficult to beat since it has a new ability called Bloodthirst. Basically what it does is that it restores 1 8th of its total HP when it uses a biting move. But we beat him, get the stolen Pokeball, and go back to give it to the little girl. While progressing through the Falarok Valley, Nitro hit level 33, and to my surprise, it evolved into Rhizodon, which was way earlier than I thought. Also picking up the Brick Break TM, which was pretty awesome, and I taught it the Chief, Nitro, and Havoc. After the Falarok Valley, we made it to Route 5, which was once again uneventful, just finding a TM for Bug Bomb? Once done there, I made it to Orshore Town, which was about to come in insanely clutch. For one, I was able to talk to this guy here and pick up a Water Stone. And guess which member of my team evolves with a Water Stone? That's right, I used the Water Stone on King Pen to evolve it into a Ping Laid. And let, tell me, this thing doesn't look awesome. And yes, don't worry, I looked up Pinglet's moveset before doing this in case there was a couple good moves I wanted before committing to the evolution, but it didn't learn anything of use, so I just evolved it right there. Also, Pinglet does learn moves by level up, just at some later levels. So for the time being, I just gave it Brick Break. And the second reason this town would come in clutch was a little spot called the Battle Bridge, which separates Orshore from the next town. Before being able to access the bridge, we get challenged by Rodney, who was swept by my newly evolved Kingpen. And during this battle, the Chief hit level 34 and evolved into Dino Peon, a fighting and dragon type who looked pretty sick too, learning Dragon Claw upon evolving too. On my trip through the Battle of Bridge, I find the X Scissor TM, who I taught to Kingpen, and while fighting this trainer, Ion hit level 32. And, guess what happens when Ion hit level 32? Yep, you guessed it, it evolved into a Terra Volt. 
an absolute monster with an insane speed and special attack stat. Also, I'm not done here. At level 32, Havoc learned a new move called Aqua Slam, a 70 base power physical water move with a 30% chance to lower the target's speed, which was a big deal since Havoc had a stab water move that could be used with its physical attack, which was a lot higher than its special attack. But guess what? I'm not done here! More towards the end of the bridge, Havoc got to level 36, and can you guess what happens at level 36? Havoc reached its final form and evolved into a Sala Slam, meaning my entire team is fully evolved, for now at least. So for this point in the game, this was the squad I was rolling with. After the battle bridge, we made it to the docking port, which after speaking with this sailor, said that he takes people to across the sea over to Wei Tide City, but he left his keys at his house over in High Point City, so that's where we need to go next. But before we could leave, Rick challenges us to a battle, and with my fully evolved team, he really didn't stand a chance, and was completely swept by Chief and Moxie. After the battle, we were here on Route 6, which I'll just skip over other than Ion learning Volt Switch at level 36. Route 7 was similarly boring, other than a quick battle with Kira, who Ion... yeah, I'll, well I'll skip over this one. So here we are at High Point City. While running around High Point for a bit, I learned that the gym leader, Amber, is out at Mount High Point. So, once I get there, I find Amber, and she explains that some weird people in uniforms were seen up the mountain. So, I scale up, fighting some Team Lunar Grunts, and finding the Flamethrower TM, which was pretty awesome. And sooner than later, we were here at the top, where we find both teams beefing about some core stone. So, Amber comes in to stop them and she asks us to fight the Solar Commanders, which was actually pretty scary since they had some pretty threatening mons, like a literal time bomb Pokemon. Anyways, after we take them out, Amber says she'll go back to her gym, so that's our objective for now. While making my way to the gym, Rick stops me and is a cocky bastard as always, and I did some research and realized I missed out on a TM for Roost, so I head back over to Route 7 to pick it up which I uh, didn't end up using for some reason, which I don't know why I didn't. And while making my way up to the gym, my egg finally hatched into a Finflix, a water and dragon type Pokemon with the ability Storm Drain, which was going to come in super handy against the fire type gym, and I named it Ness. After grinding it up, I head straight for the gym and get through the puzzle without too much trouble. And now was time to take on Amber, the fire type leader. I bring Chief, Nitro, Havoc, and King Pen for this gym, which, uh, looking back on it, I don't know why I didn't bring Ness. Uh, I seriously don't know why I didn't bring it. Maybe it wasn't as strong as I thought. I don't know. She leads with a Hot Top, a fire and rock type Pokemon, and I lead with the Chief. I hone Claws while at Lava Plumes for some damage, and thankfully doesn't get the burn on me. And I bulldoze for the kill, getting a moxie boost, and right away she brings in her ace, Magrizzly, a fire and fighting type Pokemon. I just bulldoze for maximum damage, which to my surprise, it lives and fires back with a storm throw, knocking out the chief. I bring in Havoc and Aqua Slam while she heals and I end up taking it out. Her next mon is a Blitzaglow a fire and electric type with levitate, which, fun fact, I almost chose this bond for this playthrough, but I decided against it since I already have two electric types on the squad. Anyways, I just click Aqua Slam and end up killing it in one shot, bringing in her last mon, Billaze, who yeah, just dies to an Aqua Slam, uh, securing me the blast badge and the TM for Solar Claw, a 120 base power physical fire move, but needs a turn to charge, similar to Solar Beam. After the battle, I head out of the gym, and I run into Rodney, who tells me he's here for the gym battle and all that, but out of nowhere, Amber runs out and explains how the two teams know she has the core stone, and will try to come back for it. So, she gives it to me. And I find it kind of funny that Rodney just got here and is getting dropped with all these big ass events out of nowhere. Even he was absolutely lost when Amber was explaining it, which was kind of funny. After all that fiasco, I run around the place for a bit since I still need the sailor's keys, and the sailor's daughter gives me them, 
and this cable car place opened up, which I could get to the docking port a lot quicker. So I talked to the sailor, and he takes me to Route 9, which was very uneventful, so here we are in Wei Tide City. While running around, I find this dude who actually knows who I am, and after him saying that mom and dad let me go out on my adventure, I put two and two together that this guy was my older brother, named Wade, which was pretty awesome. Then out of nowhere, Misty shows up, and Wade explains that she was here for the Pokemon fishing contest. She challenges me to a battle which was a complete pushover, and Misty explains the rules of the fishing contest, which is pretty much the bug catching contest, which no one really cares about. Then she gives me an egg which I just throw in the box since I'm really not interested in using the Pokemon. And after running around for a bit lost, I go to leave the city when Kira stops me and tells me that Pinewood is in the museum. So I head there at once and Pinewood explains that Team Solar and Team Lunar have the same goals, to take over the Rakoto region, with their respective legendary Pokemon, Solarin and Lunero. And to do so, they need to have all 5 elemental stones in order to open a portal where the two sleep. It actually goes into, into some pretty intense lore, saying that the five stones represent five legendary Pokemon that help seal Solarin and Lunera away in a portal to help end a war between them. Since Pinewood explains that both Pokemon were born in an eclipse, and in a sense, are the same Pokemon, Solarin being born from the sun, and Lunero being from the shadow of an eclipse and that the evil teams are not only after the stones to open the portal, they're after the sun and moon crystals, since those crystals will be able to control the legends. If not, they'll pretty much nuke the whole region. At the end of the conversation, the professor gives me the surfboard, the HM replacement for surf, and our next destination is Ghoul Pool Swamp, east of Route 9. In front of the entrance to the swamp, I find Rodney, who challenges me to a battle who was pretty easy to beat, then gives me a hammer, the HM replacement for Rock Smash, and now are free to head into the swamp. The swamp wasn't too interesting, just finding the Sludge Bomb TM, who I taught to Havoc since it was a great upgrade from Fever. Making my way through the swamp, I run into these buffoons again, and they say that a creepy man appeared out of nowhere, and I'm sitting there like... And they challenge me to a battle because of course they do, getting destroyed and while fighting them, Nitro hit level 40 and learned Crackle Slam, an incredible new 90 base power physical electric move with a chance to flinch the target. After we beat those two, Lunar Commander Scarlet shows up and challenges us to a battle who Chief absolutely destroyed, and I go investigate said creepy house. Which was nothing interesting, just a Shadow Ball TM, and an encounter with a Gaslit who I punt to the moon. Once out of the swamp, we made it to Route 10, which was, once again, super underwhelming, until I made it to an area called the Rainbow Reef, and here is where I find Misty, along with Team Solar, who looks to be abusing this Pokemon. So, in a double battle with Misty, we crushed them, and after the battle, Ness evolved into Fyndra, which was a relief since this thing wasn't very strong as a Finflix. After the battle, the Pokemon jumps back in the water and leaves behind a Pokeball, which happened to be a Coral Flower, a held item that boosts both water and rock type moves. After the Rainbow Reef events, we were free to head east until we made it to Coralite Town. When I head into the Pokemon Center, I find Rick, who explains that in the Battle Lighthouse, there's a guy who's given out the flying service the HRM replacement for fly. So after healing, I rushed there to get my flying service, and the trainers in here were no joke, destroying most of my team. At the top we find Lighthouse Keeper Beacon, who wants to fight me before giving me the flying service. His battle was pretty easy since he only had flying type Pokemon, but now we have the flying service. When I leave, Rick tells us he's headed back to his house in Rasic City, so it's clear where we need to go next. After a quick battle with Kira, she gives me the amulet coin and we're free to head to Route 11, where we meet this girl, who works here at the Hay Barrel Ranch. Where she takes us on a tour of the ranch and shows us Bowel, the sort of Eevee of this generation, since it has multiple typed evolutions. When we're about to leave, we hear a weird noise coming from the back of the ranch, so we head there to investigate and we find Team Solar messing with these Bowels 
So, we got to deal with them, and as a reward, are able to pick one up for ourselves. I name it Puff, then move on to Route 12 in Lake Bliss, where Kira explains that she's headed to Green Pine City for the next gym badge. And I go find Ronnie at the Safari Zone, which I don't really care about. He challenges me to another battle who the chief completely swept, and then are able to move on to Sale Port Town, where I find Rick who challenges me to another battle, and I absolutely body him. And he explains that to get to Rassic City, we gotta head through the Ancient Pass, just north of Sale Port. But before that, Ronnie says that the Professor is in the Pokemon Center, and has a special something for us. So I get there, and after some yapping about the same stuff as in the museum, and that we gotta prevent them from getting the rest of the stones, to help us out in defeating the evil teams, Professor Pinewood gives me the Salislamite. Yup, a mega stone for my starter. Since I didn't mention it at the start, but this game, along with all the other awesome features, also includes mega evolutions. So Pinewood explains that in order to use the mega stones, we gotta head over to Rassic City, since the specialist of Mega Evolutions resides there, Lizzie, who's also Rick's sister. So that's our next objective, so I head for the Ancient Pass right away. With more yapping from this bastard, we make it through the pass without too much issues. But throughout the cave section, I find Rodney and Kira. Then, out of absolute nowhere, this guy comes flying in at Mach 10, with Rick coming in hot too. So the three of us follow them, where we learn that this is Rex, the Dragon Type Master and a member of the Elite Four, and that he was also after Team Solar and Team Lunar. And after walking up, we find that literally all of the commanders and the leaders, and this is where we are challenged by Commander Gloria, which was pretty simple. Then they bounce, and Rex tells us to meet him at the Ancient Museum in Rassic City. While running around the Ancient Pass, I find the Stone Edge TM, which is pretty awesome, and I taught it to the Chief and Nitro. And after some more time, we made it to Rassic City, where we're stopped by Rodney, who challenges us to another battle, which, I'll give it to him, his team was actually pretty hard to deal with, but I still end up beating him. After healing, we headed to the museum, where the scientist explains more about the sun and moon crystals and how they tie into the legends, the crystals basically acting like batteries for the legends, make them, making them stronger. And more yapping about to keep the crystals safe, but like, who cares? And while running around the city, I find Rick, who explains that this is his house. So, we barge into his house without any consent, since we're reasonable people, after he actually politely introduced me to his parents, and his sister walks in. And what a better way of getting back at Rick, than getting with his sister, am I right? <laughs> okay, f Jesus, I'll stop. She tells me to come by the Rassic Castle to battle her, but there'll be much more going on in there if you catch my drift. Jesus Christ, shut the f*** this place primarily consists of Dragon-type Pokemon, and Lizzie was nothing less. The battle with her was like a gym battle, only allowing me to bring three Pokemon. So, I bring the Chief, Havoc, and Kingpin, and get to battle Lizzie. She leads off with a Fyndra, and I just Dragon Claw for the kill, bringing in her Feagon. A Dragon and Fairy-type, which I had no idea about, so I just Dragon Claw like a dumbass, and take a Dragon Breath, which doesn't actually kill me, but I get to fire off a Stone Edge, which it barely lives, and it takes me out with Dragon Breath. I bring in Havoc and Sludge Bomb while she heals, doing around 75% to it, and getting the poison. But I'm just faster and I kill it with Sludge Bomb, bringing in her Ace, Cryodra, a Dragon and Ice type. Who again, I wanted to use in this playthrough, but I already had an Ice type and was planning to already have two Dragons. But she throws an absolute curveball at me and mega evolves her Cryodra, which looked actually really cool. I'm somehow faster than it and fire off a brick break at it, which does around 60%, and it firing back with flash cannon for some reason, which does absolutely nothing, and I'm able to finish it the next turn. After the battle, she compliments me non-stop, calling me a talented trainer, which, if you don't know, in guide terms, basically she wants me so bad it's blatantly obvious. Then she gives me a mega ring, meaning she wants me that much more, and we skedaddle out of there, where Rex shows up and lets us choose between 5 different eggs, a red, green, blue, yellow, and pink egg, each containing a special pseudo-legendary in them. 
I choose the red egg and quickly hatch it. And it hatches into a Serpyro, a fire and dragon type Pokemon that was going to be my fire type for the game. I name it Shades and grind it up to the rest of the team, it learning Flamethrower, Dragon Rush, and Coil, which would make for a pretty cool combo. I fly back to Sailport since I need to head south from there. So, we made it to Route 14, which as you could probably expect was pretty uneventful, other than a small cutscene where we see some weird deer looking thing planting some flowers around itself. We learn that this Pokemon is Heelthea, a legendary Pokemon known for its ability to grow plant life. After completely ignoring that old guy since I wasn't interested at all, Shades reached level 48 and evolved into Slith Heat, who looked pretty sweet. After Route 14, we made it to the Whisper Tunnel, which, while making our way through the tunnel, am stopped by Kira, where she explains how she heard an old man screaming, which, uh, I'll just ignore that, and shortly later, we find Team Lunar harassing this old guy, who are here for the White Stone. Lunar Commander Marcus challenges me to a battle who was easily dealt with. Notable was Ion learning Air Slash at level 50, which was awesome. Kira tells us that Green Pine isn't far from the cave, so here we are in Green Pine City. We learn that the gym leader Bailey is out in the tropic jungle researching a special flower, but before being able to head on over, Kira stops us and gives us the board motor, the HM replacement for Waterfall. While exploring this route, I find the TM for Poison Jab, which was awesome since now I had a physical poison move to teach to Havoc. I did some research and noticed that there are a bunch of shops in Green Pine that I missed. So I go back and see what's up. None of the shops are particularly interesting, just a guy who sold stones. But the best one by far was this guy. He sold the old HM moves and I instantly bought Waterfall, since now my King Pen would have a physical water move, since I was rolling with Water Pulse for the whole time I had it. I also taught it to Havoc since it was slightly stronger than Aqua Slam, so an upgrade is an upgrade. Oh, and I realized that Shades learned Poison Jab, so I taught it to him for a pretty cool coverage move. After doing that, we made it through Route 15, and a somewhat uneventful trip through the Tropic Jungle. Only notable was Nitro learning Earthquake at 51. Then end up finding Bailey at the Cascade Waterfall, who explains that a mysterious Pokemon lurks around this waterfall, and that he was trying to find it. So, he asks us to go up the waterfall and explore what's up there. The mysterious Pokemon that was up there was a Cryodro, the first stage form of Cryodra. Remember Lizzie's pretty sick Mega Pokemon? I catch it and name it Drake, and go up one more waterfall to actually find its Mega Stone, which was sick. So here is where I make a realization. See, when I made a team for this game, I planned on using two of the pseudo legends. I got one from the egg in Rasic City, and I was able to obtain another egg in the Tropic Cave. But the only problem with that is my dumbass didn't realize that the Tropic Cave is a post-game only area. So I was pretty sad. Then I realized I had the power to do whatever I want and no one can tell me otherwise. So. Everyone, I'd like to you to welcome Spud the Droot onto the squad, a grass and dragon type with the ability Harvest. So you're probably asking yourself why I want to use this thing. Because I like how it looked and I wanted to use it. So I grind it up and at level 48 it evolved into a Dragoon. Before being able to go in the gym, Kira stops us and challenges us to a battle and she was the first of our rivals to whip out her Mega, which I didn't actually like, so I'm happy I didn't choose this starter. After we destroy her, we head for the gym, and while progressing through the gym, King Pen reached level 52 and finally learned Icicle Crash, an obviously insane upgrade over Ice Ball, which I've been using for the whole game. Not too much time later, we made it to Bailey, and my team was pretty well equipped to handle grass types. I bring Havoc, Ion, Kingpin, and Shades, and he leads off with a Brachiodon, a grass and ground type. I switch to Ion and take it out with an Air Slash, bringing in a Woodon, a grass flying type, who I just Air Slash for another kill. He brings in Tiki Toto, a grass and fire type with Drought. I Volt Switch for some damage and go into Havoc expecting a fire move, and it goes for Fiery Dance. And here's where things turn up. 
Before the battle, I gave Havoc its Mega Stone. So, this was the time we were finally going to Mega Evolve Havoc. I go for the Mega and Poison Jab, and Mega Salislim actually looks pretty dope. And he brings in his Ace, Kongrilla, a Grass Fighting type. I go into Havoc Summary since I'm curious what ability it has, and yeah, that's pretty insane. I go for Bounce while he bulks up, and of course my Bounce misses, so I just go for Poison Jab while it Leaf Darts and does a lot. Poison Jab bringing it down to red, so I switch into Shades and he heals. I click Flamethrower and it just one shots the thing, winning me the Nature Badge and the TM for Leaf Darts. Our next objective is to head south to Route 16, where this worker tells me that the Crystal Caves is shut down for the moment, since there was a small avalanche that's blocking the entrance. He tells me that Serio Town isn't far, and we should head there instead. On my way there, I run into Rick, who challenges me to a battle, who King Pen absolutely destroyed. Route 17 was once again uneventful, and here we are in Serio Town, where you find Rodney and the Professor, and the Professor explains that this is the chamber that Solaren and Lunero rest in, and that when the five stones are placed upon the pedestals, the chamber in the middle will open. Professor then explains that there is a crystal they don't yet have, which is at the Sea Temple underwater at the Rainbow Reef. So, we are tasked with going there and obtaining the Sea Crystal, which means we get gifted the Snorkel, the HM replacement for Dive. I explore around the city for a bit, and I find this place called the Creator's Hub, a building with all the creators of the game, which was pretty awesome. I'm actually able to battle a few of them, and they actually have some really strong teams, notably this guy with a Mega Get Gone, who was really damn strong and put up a hell of a fight. Also seeing a Mega Razudon, who looked also really cool. After all that, I talk to Rodney who takes us to the Rainbow Reef, where we find some members of Team Solar, and Rodney tells us to go on ahead. But once here, I find more Team Solar people, and their leader Gloria, who leaves her measly grunts to try and beat me, and a with a combination of Ion and Nitro, we completely demolished them. Since we were too late to stop them, Rodney flies us back to Serio Town to tell the professor what happened. He tasks us with continuing on, since there wasn't too much to do here in Serio Town. So, I head on to the Crystal Caves, which was, again, very uneventful. So, with that, we made it to the Snow Peak Village. I explore around the village, and while speaking to this girl, she gives me the TM for Ice Beam, which was pretty awesome. And I taught it to Havoc, since it would work well as a coverage move, and it would work well with its Mega Ability Sheer Force, which would boost the power of Ice Beam. And while heading downward towards the next area, Ronnie stops us and challenges us to a battle, who wasn't too hard. But I did get to see what his Mega looked like, and I really liked it. But obviously Havoc's is better. So with that over with, I headed down to Route 18, which, say it with me, was uneventful then ended up in the Frost Hail Forest, which was actually pretty eventful for once. So, a little bit of a story time. Ever since I boxed the Chief for Spud way back in Green Pine City, I've been hurting for a fighting type on my team, and there was one in particular I looked at and really liked. But, unfortunately, it shared the ice type with King Pen. So, as much as I liked King Pen, the Piglade, it was time to go. So, everyone, welcome Tonic the Kohler Cub to the squad. And after just one level, Tonic evolved into a sub arrow. Then, immediately used a cold stone on it to get me my Polar Pal, an ice fighting type with the ability Ice Body with an absolutely awesome stat spread with super high attack and defense. I know ice fighting is kind of a shit defensive typing, but offensively, this thing's a monster, hitting half of the types for super effective damage. Also, it came with arguably the best new move introduced in this game, Glacier Crash, and a 100 base power physical ice move that hits everything on the field. So, imagine an ice type earthquake. I taught it some other moves like Brick Break and Stone Edge, and a new TM I picked up in the Cascade Waterfall, Razor Blade, a 90 base power steel move with a high crit rate. So, a steel type Leaf Blade or Night Slash, if you will. And after grinding it to the rest of the squad, I headed through the Frost Hill Forest, which was uneventful until I ran into this person, who asked me if I seen a huck, huck pup around. She explains that she was playing with it until a blizzard came and split the two apart. 
so we offer to help her find it. But before doing that, I find the flash cannon TM, then find the huck pup surrounded by some bats. So we take them all out, then reunite the two together. After the Frost Hill Forest, we made it to Subhale City. And when we enter, Kira stops us and challenges us to a battle, who my team somewhat handled to a decent degree. I go heal, then go to the gym where the dude tells me that Alice, the gym leader, is out training because, you know, of course she is. Then go explore around the city for a bit, when I come across this dude freaking out since his son was left on the Subhale ice caps when some wild Pokemon attacked them. He got away, but just left his son there and bounced without him. So I agree to go help this guy, and while making my way through the Subhale ice caps, Shades hit level 64. Which, yeah, nothing happened, but I used a rare candy on it to make it hit level 65. And this is where Shades finally evolved into Blazilic. And just look how sick this thing looks. Definitely one of my top favorite Pokemon in this game. Not too long after, I find myself at the end, and I see the little boy. I take out all the No Seal and Icicle, and as a reward for being a better dad than this bum, he gives me the Super Rod. I head back to the city to find the gym had opened up and finish the puzzle without too much trouble to make it to Alice. And she was the same girl I helped in the forest, so that was pretty cool. I led with Tonic and her with a Snow Wrong, an Ice Ghost type with the ability Snow Warning, which just helped me since Tonic has Ice Body, which was buffed in this game healing 1 8th of your total HP every turn rather than 1 16th if Hail was up. It goes for Freeze Dry, which does absolutely nothing, and I go for Razor Blade, bringing it down to the red. See, because if I was smart, I would have given Tonic something like Bulk Up or Swords Dance to set up with, since this gem would have been, you know, easy money. But I'm dumb as a post, so I didn't think of that at all. I take out the Snow Wrong and bring in her Crystal Wing, a bug and ice type which dies immediately to Stone Edge. Next is her own Polar Pow, which was somehow faster than mine, even if I had like 5 levels on it, but it goes for some mission which does a lot of damage, but I end up taking it out with a Brick Break. Lastly is our Husk Hold, who sucker punches me for the kill. But I just bring in Shades and melt the thing to a crisp, getting me the Polar Badge and the TM for Frost Claw. The exact same move the Solar Claw, an 120 base power ice move that needs a turn to charge, but it doesn't if there's Hail set up. After we head out and Rodney tells us that the professor wanted to see everyone back in Serio Town. So Rodney gives us a lift over and... Uh... That's a lot of people. We see both Team Solar and Team Lunar along with the professor and Kira who look to be captured by the two teams. Rodney and I pull up and they explain that they're actually working together to unleash the two legends. Since they don't have access to all the stones they need unless they work together. But... The only stone that they are missing is the core stone, which guess who got given it? Now they're literally threatening me to give me the stone or they're gonna get pretty violent. So I had no choice but to walk up to the pillar and put the core stone on the pedestal. The two legends get released and with the power of the sun and moon crystals controlled by the leaders immediately start fighting. But, because of their similar strength and capabilities, the battle will have no winner and everyone will lose. All of a sudden, Rex shows up out of nowhere and explains that he has a crystal called the Balance Crystal, which will call a legendary called Celance, who has the power to soothe and calm anything. So, Rex summons it, and it doesn't seem to be doing anything because of the crystals the team leaders have. So, we gotta use Brute Force and take on the leaders head to head in order to get the crystals from them. Up first was Solar Leader Starla, who was an absolute joke getting swept by Havoc. Next up was our Lunar Leader Derek, who was also pretty easy, but this Mega Alice Stomp was pretty scary looking, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty sick. Notable in this fight was Tonic learning Super Power at level 64, which was a pretty great upgrade over Brick Break. After the battle with those two, the two legends calm down and Celence is able to seal them away once again, taking the sun and moon crystals with them, so that they'll never be able to be controlled ever again. Then the cops show up and all the grunts and commanders leave, except the two leaders who stay and paid the price by getting arrested. 
After all that, we got gifted the Master Ball, and we got to go to Wei Tide City and battle my brother for the 8th Gym Badge. But before going anywhere, I get Spud to level 65 and evolve it into a Frugon, which was once again one of my favorite looking Pokemon in this game. I then fly to Sailport Town to find the Mover Learner, since I could get some pretty awesome moves with the random heart scales I picked up throughout my journey. Two of which were the signature moves for the two pseudo legendary Pokemon Draconic Flare for Shades and Draconic Bloom for Spud. These moves are pretty awesome sounding themselves, but they also have a very special gimmick to them. The gimmick being, they're both Dragon type and the secondary Stab type simultaneously, meaning that Draconic Flare is Dragon and Fire type move, and Draconic Bloom is a Grass and Dragon type move. Which, to this day, I'm not too sure how they work with super effective damage, since I swear I would use Draconic Flare on a Grass type and it would do normal damage, but, I don't know, they're powerful moves, and that sounded really cool, so I'm still gonna use them. After that, I go hunting for some TMs like Thunderbolt and Energy Ball, who I taught the Ion, then Earthquake, who I only taught the Tonic for the time being. Before entering the gym, I get challenged by Rodney, who is beaten them pretty easily. And then while leveling my team for the end game, at level 62, Nitro learned Outrage, which was pretty sick. But now... It was final gym time. I get through the gym puzzle pretty easily, then I'm ready to take on Wade. I bring Ion, Spud, Havoc, Tonic, and Shades for this one, leading with Ion, and him with a Jelly King, a Water Ice type, who Ion destroyed with a Thunderbolt, bring in Coraltil, a Water and Rock type, who is once again one shot by Energy Ball, Ion leveling up and actually wanting to learn Hurricane, which I debated for a while, but ended up saying no since I was completely fine with Air Slash. Next was Marizadon, who actually looked really cool. I switched into Spud, I couldn't use Volt Switch because this thing had Lightning Rod, so yeah. Eating up the incoming Lightning Strike, and I clicked Draconic Bloom and kill it in one, bringing in his ace, Ty Dude, who, uh, yeah, was pretty uncomfortable to look at but was dealt with in one shot with Draconic Bloom, bringing in his last mon, Paradiso, a grass and water type, who was incredibly easy to take out with Draconic Bloom, winning me my 8th badge, the title badge, and the TM for Ripple Wave, a 50 base power special water move that hits twice. Once out of the gym, I heal my team and go straight for the victory aisle, but before I'm allowed to go, I'm stopped by Kira, who just wishes me luck and bounces. And after qualifying for the victory aisle, we were on our way. While making my way through, I get stopped by Rick, who wants to battle, which was a pretty underwhelming battle. After pressing on forwards, we made it to the Rakoto League Village. Once here, I run into Rodney and Kira, who yap about some stuff, and we gotta go meet them in the main building. I stock up on some potions and finalize the moveset for my guys, giving Tonic bulk up over Razor Blade and Hammer Arm over Super Power, since I didn't like the drawbacks to Super Power. And giving Shade Scald, since it was a really nice coverage move to have against Rock and Ground types. So now I should probably explain how the Pokemon League works in this game. It's structured in a tournament format, where the winner of the tournament will be able to challenge the Elite Four in Champion. The tournament includes a bunch of random trainers, then me, Kira, Rodney, and Rick. But before we get into it, we gotta do the final team recap. So here is my final team of Pokemon Solar Light and Lunar Dark. First, we got Havoc the Salislam, my starter since the beginning and has honestly pulled its weight all game and more, being a fantastic Pokemon. My final moveset was Waterfall and Poison Jab for Stab which are both powered up by its Mega Evolution's Sheer Force, then Ice Beam and Brick Break for coverage, and as previously mentioned, holding the Salislamite. Next was Nitro the Rhizodon. This thing was awesome to use and was super powerful with an incredible type combination, mainly against the fire types that Team Solar had. Its final moveset was Crackle Slam and Earthquake for Stab, then Outrage and Stone Edge for coverage, holding the Muscle Band for a small boost of physical moves. Overall, fantastic Pokemon. Next was arguably the most clutch Pokemon on my team, 
Ion the Terra Volt. I was very indecisive when I saw this thing, since its ability really drew me away from it, but I ended up giving a shot, and this thing was an absolute monster, one-shotting pretty much anything in its way. Its final moveset was Thunderbolt, Air Slash, Energy Ball, and Volt Switch, while holding the Wise Glasses to give it a small boost to special moves. I love this moveset, since the grass coverage with Energy Ball is fantastic, hitting the ground and rock types that wall it, then its other moves all being Stab, mainly Volt Switch for when it's in Defeatist, I could at least get it out of battle while getting some chip damage in. Next up was Tonic the Polar Pow, the most recent addition to the team and it's been great. My final moveset on it was Bulk Up in case I got the chance to set up, then Earthquake, Hammer Arm, and Glacier Crash for some great attacking moves while holding the leftovers for a bit of recovery. Next are my two pseudo legends who are both absolute units. First, we got Spud the Frugon. This thing I didn't use as much as I wanted to, but it was still amazing when I sent it out. Its final moveset was Draconic Bloom, Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Leech Seed, holding the Citrus Berry, which was great with its harvest ability. And if Leech Seed is set up, this thing is very hard to remove off the field along with its great natural bulk. And last, but not least, the absolute nuke on my team, we got Shades the Blazilic. I used this guy a ton, and I absolutely loved using it. It was not only super strong, but it looked so awesome, and I'm so happy I got to use it on this team. My final moveset for it was Draconic Flare for a strong, spammable stab move, Flamethrower for similar reasons, and it's actually super effective against stuff, then Scald and Earthquake for fantastic coverage moves while holding the Expert Belt to boost its super effective hits. And I can't finish this recap without two honorable mentions who helped a ton throughout this journey. King Pen the Pinglade and Chief the Dinopion, who were staples on my team for a majority of the game. So, that was it. That's my final team for Pokemon Solar Light and Lunar Dark. Just a couple more obstacles in my path. The first of which being the tournament. We get registered that get introduced to the stage where this guy explains the rules and he explains the pools of trainers since we were divided into pools. We were in group D, the last one, so while the round's playing out, I need to talk to the people in between. After speaking with Kira, we are called to the stage and well, she's my first opponent. We only get to bring three Pokemon for this and I bring Ion, Spud, and Shades. Weirdly not bringing Havoc to Mega Evolve. She leads off with her Bab Blizz. So right away, I Volt Switch into Shades, who eats a Blizzard, but does nothing because of multi-scale, taking it out with a Flamethrower. Then she brings in her Flare-O. She Mega Evolves, but I'm surprisingly faster and one-shot it with Scald. Her last Mon is Pixlily, who got absolutely incinerated by Flamethrower. My next fight was against Punk Guy Pius, who I bring Ion, Nitro, and Havoc to this one. He leads off with a Hum Breach, and I just Thunderbolt for a lot of damage, and it goes for Water Spout doing absolutely nothing. I then Volt Switch to kill it, and go into Havoc, while he brings in his Ace, Rhizodon. So I go for, for a Mega and Waterfall, while this thing also goes for Mega. And when my Waterfall is resisted against this thing, I got pretty skeptical. So. I looked it up and this thing is electric and dragon type, which I was super shocked by. But it goes for fire blast, and I just kill it the next turn with ice beam. His last mon is a carbonitro, a pure ice type with a pretty awesome gimmick. It changes form when it's burned, which is a great concept. It's kind of disappointing since burning yourself isn't worth it just for the type change in a much cooler form. It also has a signature move that it used on me called dry ice. An 80 base power special ice move with a 10% chance to burn or freeze the target. I beat it pretty easily, then move on to Backpacker Reyna. I bring Spud, Tonic, and Ion, and she leads off with a Hypnosmog, a poison and psychic type. I click Earthquake for some damage, doing just more than half, and this thing using Sludge Bomb for similar damage and poisoning me, but my Citrus Berry procs, and I get it back right away because of Harvest. So, I just go for the Earthquake and kill it, bringing in a Nail Whale, a Water Ice type. 
I switch into tonic while it megas and it actually looks really cool and uses ice shard which does a little bit of damage. It outspeeds and aqua tails for a lot of damage though but tonic holds on and one shots it with hammer arm bringing in her last mon a flapping co a normal a normal flying type who outspeeds me and kills me with hyper voice. But Ion comes in and thunderbolts this thing into an oblivion, making me the winner of my pool and I am into the quarterfinals. So I talk to everyone, then the corner finals start. The pairings for the quarterfinals are up, and after speaking to everyone, my match is about to start. And the quarterfinals are 4v4, so I bring Ion, Spud, Shades, and Havoc for this one. And he leads off with a Tundrill and I with Ion. I'd immediately Volt Switch into Havoc, eating the Ice Skull Crash, then go for a Mega and use Waterfall for some reason and not using the 4x effective Brick Break. But it's faster and it hits me with a super effective Drill Run, doing a lot of damage. But I survive and take it out. Coming in next is an Eclipser, who I just demolish with Waterfall, bringing in Swelligant, a Water and Flying type, which I just click Poison Jab for some damage, intending to sacrifice it. But Havoc is just a monster and lives on 20 HP from Air Slash and takes out the Swelligant in one shot. Her last Pokemon is a Fivesta, a Poison and Dark type who takes me out with a Foul Play. I bring in Shades and beat it with a couple of Flamethrowers. I'm now in the semi-finals and I'm up against Ronny. The winner moves on to the finals. And this time, it's a 5v5 battle. I bring everyone but Nitro and he leads off with a Loon Ape and I with Ion. I risk a Volt Switch into Shades and this thing Calm Minds, which is a very bad thing because this thing has the simple ability, doubling its stat changes. I click Earthquake since it's a physical move and it picks up the kill on it, which I was super relieved by. He brings in Bulker and I Draconic Flare for around half his health and he just knocks off for some reason. I, draw, I Draconic Flare again for the kill, sending in his Babble. I switch it to Ion and eat a Scald, which brings me just under half, meaning I was in Defeatist. So I just Volt Switch for some damage to Spud and click Draconic Bloom. And he switches into his Budsaur, and I go back into Ion, while he chatters for some damage and confuses me. I risk a Thunderbolt but ended up hitting myself and it takes me out with a Hyper Voice. I bring in Shades and Draconic Flare for the kill, bringing back in the Babel, and I just go for Draconic Flare, bringing it into the red and it's scalding me for a fair amount of damage, but I'm just able to take it out the next turn. Lastly is his Mound Tree, which Mega Evolves, but I scald trying to burn it, but no luck. But I'm able to bring in Tonic and Hammer Arm for the kill, winning me the battle and advancing to the finals. And my finals opponent is none other than Rick. And the finals is an all out 6v6 battle. I lead with Tonic and him with a Mista tablet, a Steel and Psychic type. I risk a bulk up and he goes for Future Sight, which was great. So I just Earthquake and it barely lives. And it foul plays for more damage than I would like. I just go for another Earthquake while he switches into Nadalron. And Earthquake does a fair amount but Future Sight kicking in and taking Tonic out. I go into Ion and take it out with an Energy Ball, bringing in his Pinglade, which I one-shot with Thunderbolt. Stegasteel is in next, and I go into Nitro eating a Flash Cannon and taking it out with Earthquake. And same with the Mista Tablet who comes in dying to Earthquake. Next is the Dinopion, and Nitro continues to destroy his team by one-shotting it with Outrage. In comes his last mon, Caspring, who misses a high jump kick and gets smoked by Outrage, winning me the tournament and granting me permission to challenge the Elite Four. And all of a sudden, Rick went from a cocky bastard to a nice normal dude in a matter of seconds. And some could call this... And some could call this some W Riz. And what stood before me were the last five battles of this game. The Elite Four and Champion. I go from left to right and start with Rocco, the Rock type member. He leads off with a Leonite, a pure Rock type, and I was Spud, and right away I go for Leech Seed while he sets up a Sandstorm. He then goes for a new move called Diamond Claw, a 50 base power physical Rock move with a 50% chance to raise the user's defense. 
which gets him the defense boost. But I just go for Draconic Bloom, which crits and kills it in one. And next is Jewel Tull, a bug rock type. I switch into Havoc, while this thing goes for an Ice Beam, which caught me off guard, doing a little bit of damage. I go for a Mega Boosted Waterfall, and this thing goes for an Electric Gem Boosted Shatter Gem. A pretty awesome attack since it's a 65 base power rock move, but changes its type based on what gem it's holding. In this case, an electric type move since it's holding the electric gem. Havoc holds on though and takes it out in one shot. And same thing with the incoming Volcadon, a fire and rock type. But go down to the Bulldoze since I use Waterfall into its dry skin ability, not doing any damage. I bring in Ion and Energy Ball for the kill bringing in his Coco Rocco, a grass and rock type. I Volt Switch into Nitro and go for an Earthquake, but it lives in the red and wood hammers me for the kill, but it takes himself out because of recoil. His last mon is a Golosis, a rock and fighting type, which just falls to an energy ball. One out of four members done. Next up is Nora, the normal type member, and for this one, I lead with Tonic and her with a Lazloth. I go for bulk up while it body slams for not too much damage, and we repeat the same turn, but this time it paralyzes me with body slam. I click hammer arm but it misses which sucked, eating another body slam for a little bit of damage. The next turn she switches into Moo Strike, a normal and steel type who gets squashed by hammer arm, bringing in her Bolson who also gets squashed by hammer arm. Formling is up next, and I live its hyper voice but I'm fully paralyzed. So I just let Tonic go down the next turn. I go into Shades and click Draconic Flare, and to my surprise, it was a Spirix with the Illusion ability. But it doesn't matter since it just dies to a Flamethrower anyways. Her next mon is a Sass Crush, a normal Dark type who dies to a few Flamethrowers. Lastly is a Laze Loth, who takes out Shades, but Havoc is able to come in and finish it off. Two out of four members done. The next member I was pretty scared of, Fayette the fairy type member, since my only answer to fairy types was Havoc, which was a great answer since it was super powerful, but I felt like it wasn't going to be enough. So for this fight, I taught Shades the TM for Sludge Wave, which I picked up in the Victory Isle and challenged Fayette. I lead off with Havoc right away and her with a Lop Hug. I go for a Mega Evolve and Poison Jab, killing it in one shot. Next is a Fell of. It outspeeds me and goes for a Psy Shock, which does a lot of damage, but I'm able to Poison Jab for another kill. Her next mon is a Guolo, a Ghost and Fairy type. I switch Havoc into Ion, and this thing goes for a Hypnosis, and after some turns of sleeping and actually landing a Thunderbolt onto it, I let Ion go down and bring in Shades to take it out. Then Shades goes absolutely crazy on the rest of her team taking everything out with Sludge Wave and Flamethrower. So, on to the last member, Rex, the Dragon-type member. I lead with Tonic and him with a Hydrogon, Nessa's fully evolved form. I Glacier Crash for just under half, and it uses Thunderbolt and paralyzes me, which really wasn't cool. Then the next turn he crits Dragon Pulse, bringing me into the red, but I'm able to score a kill with Glacier Crash bringing in his Strikeon, an Electric and Dragon type, and another one of those pseudo legends. Tonic goes down to a Flash Cannon, so I bring in Nitro and Earthquake this thing into an Oblivion, bringing in Dragofly, a Dragon and Bug type. I click Stone Edge while it Razor Blades for absolutely nothing, and one-shot it. He brings in his own Frugon, and I click Outrage doing a lot of damage, eating an Earthquake, then taking it out with Outrage the next turn. His next mon is his own Blazilic, who I switched into Havoc for, eating a Draconic Flare which does absolutely nothing. I go for a Mega Evolve Waterfall which does a lot of damage, and after this thing being stupid and using Flame Charge, I just Waterfall for the kill. His last mon is an Aerogon, a Dragon and Flying type, which goes for a new move called Gale Rush, an 80 base power physical flying move with a 30% chance to flinch the target. Havoc lives, but gets flinched, so I just let it go down. I go into Shades and just finish the battle with Draconic Flare, which was actually super effective, so I don't know how that move works, but only one more trainer to go. And the champion of Rakoto is 
this normal ass looking dude that I've never seen before. He introduces himself, and his name is Jax. So, one final fight left. Let's do it. I lead off with Ion, and him with Gekon. I start shitting my pants when he goes for his Mega Evolution right then and there. Mega Gekon is an incredibly scary opponent. Number one, it gets Protean, which, with this sort of learn set, is very scary. Also, its stats are very intimidating, hitting super hard on the special side and being super quick. But, Ion outspeeds the Gekon and one-shots it with Thunderbolt. And as soon as that happened, I knew the battle was over right then and there. Sylvicious is in next, a water and steel type, who Ion also fries with Thunderbolt. His next mon is an Aurorai, an electric ice type, who outspeeds and goes for frost breath, one-shotting Ion. But I think it's safe to say that Ion pulled its weight for this fight. I risk a bulk up while this thing misses a frost breath. I go for Earthquake, but this thing frost breaths for no damage, and Earthquake takes it down to its focus sash. The same events play out the next turn, and I take it out with Glacier Crash. Kelpula is in next, a water and grass type, which I Glacier Crash for a lot of damage, and at water falling for a little bit. We go for the same moves, but I end up missing my Glacier Crash, waterfall bringing me to low health, but I take it out the next turn. Next is Ellis Stomp, who gets stomped by Glacier Crash. Pun intended. And his last and final Pokemon is a Fan Sheet. A pure ghost type who goes for Hex, but I live and fire back with a Glacier Crash, literally leaving it on 1 HP. It takes me out, but Havoc comes in and finishes the battle, making me the Rakoto League Champion. So, let's just take a minute to admire the Hall of Fame team. And that's it. That was my full journey through Pokemon Solar Light and Lunar Dark. If y'all enjoyed this video and want to see more of this type of content, be sure to let me know by subscribing, leaving a like on the video, and commenting what sort of games you'd want me to play next. Also, if you're interested in my content, I recommend these videos here. But thank y'all so much for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one, one Pokemon game at a time.